Well, welcome to or welcome back to the 510 Report, where we talk about industry news, advocacy, and general goings on. Thank you so much for joining me again. What I wanted to talk about this week is we as a country are sort of entering a new legislative season. This year, more than any other year, I think we're going to see a lot of anti-vaping bills and anti-vaping legislation popping up in what I can only assume will be every city and every state in the republic, including states that have previously had very little or no restrictions at all in the past. As we're all well aware by now, Scott Godlib and the FDA, along with our new Surgeon General, Dr. Jerome Adams, are prepared perpetuating the youth vaping epidemic hysteria narrative. And unfortunately, due to that narrative, politicians and public health committees nationwide are going to be doing everything they can to limit and restrict of age adult access to far less harmful vapor products. Less harmful vapor products that, as we discussed last week, are twice as effective at smoking cessation than any pharmaceutical NRT currently on the market. Less harmful vapor products that are almost solely responsible for the lowest smoking rates the nation has seen in, I, I don't know, 20 years, maybe longer. And just as a real quick sort of on topic side note. I'm gonna be linking down in the description to an article that was published in the American Institute for Economic Research and it is titled, The Anatomy of a Moral Panic. This incredible article was written by Stephen Davies who is the head of education at the IEA and who has probably accomplished more academically than all of us combined. Keeping in mind that this article has nothing to do with vaping or e-cigs or the vape industry or tobacco control or any of it. I just find this particular paragraph so fitting that I have to read it. Politicians and regulators often react to moral panics by introducing legislation and regulations that are at best unnecessary and wasteful, at worst seriously harmful. Sometimes when the subject of the panic is real but exaggerated, you have the problem of a sledgehammer being used to crack a nut, an excessive and overbearing response. When the panic concerns something that does not actually exist, you can have laws that severely restrict people's freedoms or impose serious costs on them for no good reason whatsoever. The parallels between this article and the current nicotine regulatory climate are are unbelievable. I would highly encourage everybody watching this video to go give this article a read. I'll have it linked down below. So just this year, we've seen anti-vape legislation popping up in places like New York, New Jersey, Vermont, Colorado. All of those states are essentially trying to pass very similar legislation. In fact, I'm assuming a lot of cities and states are going to use the now really tried and true sort of tobacco control legislation blueprint. Things like raising the minimum purchase age to 21 and over, putting in place excessive taxes, limiting flavors to just tobacco and menthol and or public vaping restrictions. Sometimes online sale bans get brought up as well. That is the modern tobacco control legislation blueprint and it rarely gets diverted from. Similar bills that include all or some of the above have been introduced or are being introduced in places like Indiana, Arizona, Washington State, Nebraska. These bills are being introduced into the system at such a rapid pace that even CASA themselves can't keep up with a call to action for every single state. Additionally, a lot of these bills fly so far under the radar that the public isn't even aware of them until it's too late. And this is where it's up to us to campaign and spread information to other vapors and to other smokers about what's actually going on in the United States with vaping. Being pro-vaping is a very, very grassroots movement at the moment. It relies on us taking action. It relies on us spreading news about legislation. It relies on us to ensure that vapors nationwide know that these laws are coming down and they directly affect your freedom. Don't ever assume that someone is going to take action for you. I can't stress this enough, but we are the ones, me and you, on the front lines, literally on the front lines, standing in between a 
over-regulating government and our freedom to choose a less harmful product. A great example of this is one of my subscribers, John, recently sent me some flyers that his vape shop is handing out in Nebraska as sort of their own call to action for these bills. The bills in Nebraska are LB314 and LB149, by the way. But these flyers include an outline of the bill, how that bill is going to directly affect their customers, as well as the names, emails, and phone numbers of every representative in Nebraska that's involved in this legislation. And you know, at the end of these videos, I always say, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. This is a flawless example of what that something could be. We need to keep awareness up and we individually need to know what's going on in our state, in our city. And lastly, I was recently made aware of a very strange bill happening in the state of Maine. LB551 in the state of Maine, if passed, would ban all nicotine liquid containers. Nicotine liquid containers. Nicotine liquid containers. It appears that in order to combat the invisible enemy of a vaping epidemic, the state of Maine is going to go after the actual containers that liquid is sold in? Imagine a state like Maine putting a ban on glass bottles in an effort to cut down on youth beer consumption or proposing banning maybe shopping carts to cut down on obesity. People would say they are crazy, but the bill says prohibition beginning January 1st, 2020, a person may not sell, furnish, give away, or offer to sell furnish or give away a nicotine liquid container. Evidently in the most recent revision of this bill, the language that said unless the container is in childproof packaging was removed from the bill. And the fact that that language was removed from this bill shows that this bill is not to protect kids, but to simply restrict the freedoms of adults using these products. It's a, it's a real interesting and real bold strategy that honestly just brings up more questions than anything else. Is it all types of containers? I mean, what if I keep my liquid in a different bottle that I purchased from Amazon? Maybe it's a size limit issue, kind of like what's allowed currently under the TPD in the United Kingdom. Maybe only bottles under 10 mils will be excluded from this legislation. Would zero nicotine liquid be be exempt from the nicotine liquid container ban? Are they differentiating between high nicotine salt-based liquids or lower nicotine traditional nicotine suspension liquids? Or do I need to retry on my tinfoil hat and speculate that maybe they're trying to deem all pods and tanks as nicotine liquid containers? Since Technically, they are a container filled with liquid and nicotine. That honestly doesn't seem that far-fetched to me. Maine actually could be in a really sneaky, smarmy, underhanded way under the guise of this ban to actually attempt to implement the first statewide vape ban. Like I said before, it does not seem that far-fetched to me and, and certainly within the realm of possibility. Of course, I would love to get your thoughts on this down in those comments below. If you are in Maine and you are upset about this, which I have a feeling a lot of you are, then you can show up to the hearing in Augusta on the 19th of February. That's next week from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. It's in room 209 at the Cross Building, which I don't know exactly where that is. Use Google Maps, but if you live in Augusta, Maine, I'm assuming you might know where that is. And you can draw a map for your friends how to get there. Show up, dress nice, speak clearly, and let these politicians know to their face that you are not okay with this and that you are against this bill. I can't seem to say this enough, but these politicians, they work for us. They work for you. If they aren't representing your best interests, you let them know. You let them know that you vape and you vote. 2019 is going to be the year of really rallying the troops. Other than showing up in person to one of these hearings, 
phone calls to your representatives is the single most effective thing you can do. Emails also work really well. One of the problems with emails, at least for me, is you never really feel quite like you're being heard. 10 times out of 10, you'll get a response back that is just a, a copy paste canned response and that feels very frustrating. Ultimately, the point I'm trying to make here is that we can never quit. We can never give up. Sometimes it feels like we're just fighting a losing battle and it can feel very overwhelming. The constant attacks by the media, the constant attacks by the politicians that are supposed to have your best interests in mind. It's honestly enough sometimes to make you just wanna give up and just throw in the towel. I have been asked by other vapors why I bother, why I bother with all of this, why I bother with the 510 report, why I bother spending so much time and energy literally fighting the federal government. And my answer is always, always the same. I have no choice. When it's all said and done, and even if five or 10 years from now, vaping is completely banned and prohibited in the United States, I can say that I did everything I possibly could to fight it, and I did not just roll over and let the FDA walk all over me. We cannot just roll over and let the FDA walk all over us. Like I said, 2019 is going to be the year of rallying the troops, and we are going to do a lot a lot of troop rallying. So I think that's where we're gonna end this 510 report and I wanted to leave you with one little state of Maine fun fact. In 1846, the great state of Maine was the first state in the union to pass the very first alcohol prohibition law. How's that for some foreshadowing? And of course, I can't end the 510 Report without also mentioning Kassaw.org. I mention it every week. It's free and easy to sign up. All you need is an email. If you want to know about possible negative vape legislation coming up in your particular city, state, or area, join Kassaw.org. Follow the calls to actions. And as the great Kevin Skipper always said, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Let's get involved. Let's get involved.